have been um, fiercely honest, fiercely open uh, with what has happened to you and what you've kind of lived through. Is it difficult for you to talk about? At first, it was very difficult. Yeah. It was very difficult because of the fear. Because again, he has a machine, he has a team behind him, and mm -hmm. you don't know who's watching, who's lurking, who's coming for you, attorneys, will you be sued? It's very scary to come out, but I felt like it was necessary and yeah. needed. And so you, you, you've talked about uh, some of the details of what you endured um, uh, with him. Yeah. You've, you've, in this show, you kind of go a little further with some of those, but you also say that there are some things you will never, ever repeat. I will never speak. I will never really? repeat. I will never speak. Because I'm a firm believer in the power of the tongue and what you put out into the universe, and I don't want to give life to something that was a partial death to me. Yeah. So certain things I don't think that you should speak once you've healed and once you've put them in that place, mm -hmm. to relive it is almost re-traumatizing re yourself. Yeah. So I live in that space of certain things that I know will take me to the dark side, and I might not come back yeah just don't give life to don't speak it it I to, to speak your own truth is one uh, I, I imagine challenge yes. but to hear your children also speak their own truths uh, you have three children with with R Kelly yes. right uh, uh, Buku kid and Ja yes uh, to hear them though talk about what it was like to to see you and to experience that I think it was it was Buku talking about it on the show I want to take a look at that okay it's a little different for me versus you. So at a certain point, you can actually detach yourself from him. Right. We can't. I don't know what it's like to be R. Kelly's child. I only know what it's like to be his ex-wife. I can disconnect from it, because I'm like, well, my divorce is good and over. Right. His blood runs through your veins. Literally the other day. I that line, literally, it's, it's all I've been thinking about. His blood runs through your veins. Yeah. How do you prepare them for that even the desire to want to love their father and to know and to have experienced these horrible sides of him? For me, it was very easy because I live my life in this way. As a mother, my experience with his wife is very different as a child and your experience him being your father. Mm -hmm. And I've never crossed that line and put the two together mm -hmm. because I've always wanted my children to, whatever relationship you have with your father, I want it solely based on that because of the father he showed you that he was. Yeah. Not because I tainted you, not something that I put in your head, but we have to be very clear too. My ex would like to go out and make the world believe that I have brainwashed my children. I don't have to say anything to make my children believe that you're not a good father. It's the lack of your presence. Hmm. It's the lack of you not paying child support. It shows your children that you don't even care about the very quality of their life. Mm. So that's not something that I have to tell them. It's something you've done to them. So their relationship and the strain isn't because of me. It's the lack of his presence. It's the lack of caring that your deviant behavior, it's a domino effect. Your children have to live with that. Yeah. And the fact that you don't even take that into consideration, I don't have to make you look like a bad father. Your actions make you a bad father. What did you think, uh, I mean, speaking about actions in particular, uh, the interview with Gail King. I think it because was... it was that was one of those situations where I think a lot of people were like, okay, let's hear his side, let's hear what he's got to say, and then that thing just went off the rails. It was an Oscar-nominating, Emmy award-winning, Tony-nominating performance. You think that was the joke of like the century? Wow. Yeah, because here's the thing. Live in your truth. Mm -hmm. People are more apt to forgive when you live in your truth. Tell the truth. Everyone is not lying. This is not a joke. Lives are in jeopardy. And the way you heal is first you admit that you even have a problem. Mm. And if you cannot do that, you're never going to heal. And no one else can want your healing for you more than you do. And that's, that's one of the main reasons why I left Robert. At the end of the day, I can't want you to be better for you. You have to want to be better for you. And when you don't want it, there's nothing else I can do. So going on TV and having an interview with Gail, Gail's sympathy isn't going to heal you and get you better, Robert will. Well, it's, it's interesting that you say that because I, I, one of the things I've heard you say before is you've dealt with your own uh, fair share of criticism in all of this. Yes. Like the women that actually come up to you, uh, and you mentioned it in the show, let's take a look. And this I've been going through lately with Robert all in the press. And here I am putting myself in a position because I want to help women and they are attacking me. Hmm. It's a really raw reaction. Had something just happened when you were having that conversation? Just happened and continues to happen, unfortunately. 
the majority of my victim shaming, victim blaming. When you were still getting victim shamed? Still getting victim shamed. People still are still getting, messaging you yes, crazy, crazy yes, things? Yes, crazy things. Cut it out. No. Cut it out. No. I mean, I'm honestly, it's, like, it's enough. Been through enough. With, no one would want to, 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 to adopt, bring on this kind of attention Thank to themselves. Thank you, you get it. At what, who in their right mind would say, let me put myself, my children, my friends, my family, because it doesn't just affect the victim, it affects the families. Yeah. It affects grandparents, aunts, uncles, children, even people that are your coworkers. Yeah. Who would put themselves in front of a firing squad? There are people that would say, that doing shows like this on WeTV might open you up to that criticism. What do you think to that? You know what? Bring it. Bring it. Because I know for every 10 that have something negative, there's 100 that are watching. They're trying to figure out, how do I get out? How do I get my daughter out? What do I do? How do I continue to heal? And I believe in being a living example of what it looks like to go from victim to survivor to advocate. Yeah. So I've gotten to the point now that it's OK. Mm -hmm. It's fine. Even though you feel, you may say that I'm lying. You may feel it's a money grab. There's people who said, I didn't say anything because I got money. And now I'm saying something because I want money. At the end of the day, there's no price tag on my Soul. And for those who say, why did she wait so long to speak, I will say this to you. There's no time limit on your healing and no expiration date on your story. You speak when you're strong enough. I had to find my voice to be the voice for the voiceless. I had to find my own power to be the power for the powerless. And if you're upset that it took me 10 years, 20 years, or 30 years, it's okay because the naysayers, you may be the very one one day dialing 911. Mm. Drea, I want before I know we've got to get out of here, but I, I want to ask you this question because I feel like it is a really important thing to talk about. The, a lot of the criticism I have heard about coverage of this story and even the way that we the media has covered the story is this another effort to tear down another black man. What do you yes. say to that? It, first of all, you can't tear something down that he tore down himself. At the end of the day, everyone and and. Well, let me not say everyone. A lot of people who attack me do say that. How could you be another black woman bringing down a black man? He's one of the ones that made it out of the hood. I didn't bring him down. His behavior did. Mm -hmm. Drea's not on trial because of something Drea falsely said about Robert. Robert's on trial because of his actions. Mm -hmm. So we need to place the blame where it is. And that's where self-responsibility comes in because you don't heal if you're not going to be responsible. Even I do it. Do I deserve what Robert did to me? Absolutely not. But am I fully responsible for how long I allowed him to abuse me? Yes. And when I figured that out, that's when I got my power back. Hmm. Drea, thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. It was not an easy conversation, uh, but it was one of those conversations I felt like that needed to happen. I agree. I hope she inspires other women. Yeah. It seems like she finally found her voice to step into her power yeah. and, and really will help others. And to change her own life and the lives, the lives of her family. Yeah. Yeah. Definitely thoughts and prayers with her right Absolutely. now. Because I know even watching that, it's probably also triggering. Yeah. Uh, we reached out to R. Kelly's team for comment and not have, have not heard back yet. You can check out new episodes of Growing Up Hip Hop Atlanta on WeTV. If you love that video, you're going to love everything on the Access YouTube channel. So hit the subscribe button. You can thank me later. Hit it. Thanks.